developed to answer a question. And that question is, if I have a location on the ground and I have a satellite moving in space, when can I see it? When can I talk to that satellite? So what you're seeing right now, um, we're modeling the Earth, we model the planets, we model how objects move. We have very high fidelity propagators that are modeling how that satellite's moving over time. So we understand curvature of the Earth and how that might block our visibility from that ground location to the satellite. So what you're seeing here, when you see a, a yellow line pop up on that 3D window, it's indicating that we have visibility between those two objects. And you see we can pull out the data dynamically to understand when that occurs. Take a look at the same problem from a different point of view. We'll look at this from the surface of the Earth. We have that same ground location, and the satellite comes up over the horizon. Now, in this case, we're only taking into account the curvature of the Earth, we call this simple line of sight. And you'll see that we have line of sight visibility to that satellite as it comes over the horizon. Obviously, that's not very realistic. In the real world, we have different constraints that come into play that constrain our access. So we'll actually load in the local terrain from Breckenridge, Colorado, and you'll see that although it looks very impressive visually, we're also taking that into account for our analysis. So now there's mountains in the way. Now that's going to restrict our visibility to that object. So far we've looked at a static point on the ground and satellites moving in space. What about moving ground vehicles? We take those into account too. We understand how they move over time and how they're oriented. So that's what you're seeing here is a ground vehicle driving down that road. What if I have an aircraft that's flying over that needs to look for that ground vehicle? We can model that as well. So here you'll see a UAV flying. We understand where that object is over time. We understand how it's banking and moving. And you'll see this green sensor attached to it. So like Paul was describing, we need to understand what that sensor can see and who it can talk to. Um, the amount of area that that sensor has covered over time. And everything you've seen thus far has been hopefully very visually impressive, but something that um, is the most important part to our customers is probably the analytics under the hood. As Paul was describing, we're a commercial off-the-shelf software, um, and all of the analysis under the hood that drives this visualization is why our products are so useful for our customers. So what you're seeing is, this is a wireframe view of that 3D visualization, but this is all the analysis that we're taking into account. You can see the polygons that make up that terrain and how this picture gets so complicated so quickly. And SDK can handle all of it. Okay, so again, we've looked at a simple problem here. We have maybe one flying vehicle, we have a, a ground vehicle moving, um, and these two objects talking to each other. And this is down in the mountains of Colorado, but if we zoom out, there's a much bigger picture here. So we not only model the ground vehicles and the ships and the flying aircraft, but also um, different satellites. They, all these objects have sensors, and as you saw from Paul's demonstration in our control room, space is very crowded. So what you're seeing now are all of the active satellites moving over time. And even beyond this, beyond these Earth scenarios, we support missions all the way out to the edges of the solar system. So you can see our applications vary greatly. We have a lot of different customers using us for a lot of different reasons. But at the core of our capabilities, we understand how objects move over time. We model the world. We understand when they can see each other when different constraints are in the way.